thank you to everyone for coming out to this event at a time when we're seeing people rising up in Tunisia and driving out the dictator Ben Ali and now the uprising in Egypt which will almost certainly drive out Hosni Mubarak. I think it's a very exciting time for all of us. If you'd seen the pain that my eyes have seen, you'd never, ever, ever try to kill my dreams. Hate in his eyes, AK on his belly. We are suffering, but you don't see us on the telly. I'll never forget August the 1st, 2009, because it was the day after my 19th birthday. I was living with the Hanun family in East Jerusalem and I got a phone call from Jenna, one of the daughters of the family, to say that she would like to make me a birthday cake to celebrate. It was a very enjoyable evening, <coughs> listening to music, <coughs> eating the cake and all the family were there. But little did I know that just a few hours later, at around five o'clock in the morning, I would hear the sound of bricks flying through the kitchen window, and I would see armed Israeli forces breaking down the front door. As they rushed into the front room where I was laying down, I realised that the Hanun family, this family that had become like my own family, were being kicked out of their home. By the time I was out on the street, they hadn't even let me put my shoes on my feet. As Israeli police pushed me down the stone steps outside, I saw my wheelchair to the left and explained that I needed it because I can't walk but they told me that they didn't care and continued to push me away from the house. Now there were around 20 other foreigners and Israelis staying with the family that night to show their support but they were all arrested within less than a minute. But when one of the police officers came to me and asked me in English, where are you from? I replied in Arabic that I don't understand how to speak English. So he didn't <laughs> arrest me. But I'll never forget what I heard the head of the police telling his officer in response to what I had said. He said, don't worry about him, he's only a Palestinian. And I think that is an important statement because it sums up, for me, the mindset of the Israeli state. From the Israeli government implementing these discriminatory laws to the Israeli army and police carrying out their dirty work, to the settlers who actively go out to steal people's homes, that Palestinians are not important and are not human beings in the same way that Westerners are human beings. We were forced across the road and just an hour later watched as people with American and British passports. People with American and British accents moved into what had been their home just hours before. I saw Jenna, the same 16-year-old girl who had phoned me the evening before <coughs> to say that she would like to make me a birthday cake, now with tears 
pouring from her eyes, completely distraught. And I remember her saying, this is the second time I've been evicted from my home, so how can I ever forget? I also remember seeing Maha, the father of the family, talking to the one or two reporters who had managed to sneak past the police blockades. And I'd seen him tell the story of their family's plight maybe a thousand times before without a problem. But this time he broke down halfway through and couldn't even finish his words. And that hurt me more than anything. I stayed with the family for the next couple of weeks, now sleeping on the pavement opposite their home. And we watched as the settlers walked in and out, joking and high-fiving with the soldiers on 24-hour patrol. We watched as they sat on the stairs we used to sit on to pass the time and played football in the street where we used to play. But like all the Palestinians that I met during my time there, the Hanun family was so strong. And I remember just one day after the eviction, I saw Shelly Han, one of Jenna's cousins, a 20-year-old girl studying psychology at university, sitting and talking to people who had gathered to hear what had happened with a huge smile beaming across her face. And she was saying, they want the Arabs in Jerusalem to be stupid so that when we shout, no one will hear us. But I will never give up and I will continue to study and work hard. Now she had an exam to sit just a few days after the eviction and the university called her and said they understood the situation and she could take it at a later date. But she said, no, I want to take it now. Did her revision right there on the street where we were sleeping, took the exam three days later and ended up getting the highest mark in their year. So I think people like her can serve as an inspiration to all of us. Now, the eviction of the Hanun family was condemned at every level of power. It was condemned by the UN, it was condemned by the EU, the American consulate in Jerusalem, the British consulate in Jerusalem, the Czech ambassador, the Swedish ambassador. Yet, the Israeli government went ahead with their plans undeterred, part of a greater plan to ethnically cleanse 